Hey folks, Craig here, and today I want to talk to you about uh, game collecting, YouTube, and perhaps social media more broadly, and how those things intersect with mental health, which is <laughs> kind of a thing I should probably have written a script for, uh, but I didn't. I just always just sort of do this by the seat of my pants, so that's what we're going to do today. So I have been on YouTube for a long time, like over 10 years. Uh, I have come and gone. Uh, throughout that time, but I have been making videos somewhat inconsistently for a little over a decade. And early on on YouTube, um, it was difficult to get video game footage. I mean, that's ubiquitous now uh, when it comes to like Let's Players and streamers and video reviews. But back then, the equipment to do that was expensive and or uncommon, or uh, the quality was bad, um, things like that. So YouTubers who wanted to talk about video games developed uh, new kinds of videos to be able to talk about video games and not have to rely on video game footage. They, they sort of adapted to that, that situation and produced videos that, you know, mainstream sites like IGN were not doing. And obviously one of the, the, the big things there was uh, unboxings, obviously not created by the video game community, but um, certainly we have our fair share of unboxings. And I'm sort of pissed because <laughs> uh, mainstream outlets and even like video game publishers themselves caught on to that and kind of, uh, I want to say stole it from us. They kind of stole it from us, um, I, which is really frustrating because we spent that time developing a, a kind of content that we could do without the resources and tools that the big sites had. And then they're like, oh, that's really popular. Let me do that now. So it pisses me off to no end that they latched on to that. But um, the other thing, uh, particularly within the community that I belong to, is um, uh, collection videos. And collection videos, um, if you're unfamiliar with these, if you're watching me, you're probably not unfamiliar, but if you're unfamiliar with collection videos, collection videos are basically a YouTuber showing, uh, these are the games that I have for this particular system. Here are all my GameCube games, for instance, or here are all the games I bought in the past like month or whatever. And I think there there is a benefit to um there are some sirens going on outside i'm just i'm just gonna muscle through it i'm gonna muscle through the sirens um <clears throat> there are benefits i think to uh collection videos i think it scratches an itch for creators i know from my perspective having done many of them myself um i think that there's a benefit to be able to have a platform and talk about games that you enjoy and it's satisfying recommending uh, you know a game that perhaps people don't know very much about and you have someone tell you like oh I tried this game because you recommended it and that's really satisfying you know not a lot of not every game has to have its own video not every game has its own video review so these collection videos give um uh, content creators a sirens are ridiculous I really should cut this but she's man um it gives content creators like me an opportunity to say a few sentences about a game I enjoy, but perhaps it's not a game that just needs a whole video. And of course, there's a value to the audience. The audience gets ideas for their own collection. The audience gets ideas for new games to play that they may not know about. So collection videos uh, definitely have a benefit. But I, I, I also have to be honest. To me, they, I, think, I think this is one of those things that it has... Uh, that is sort of complicated and therefore has two separate, perhaps even contradictory truths. And that is, they're beneficial and they're probably not bad. But at the same time, there's kind of like um, this crassness to them, right? Where it, it's, it's, there's almost kind of like a, a, a flaunting of wealth in these things. And I, at this point, I have to be clear, I don't think that other YouTubers are flaunting their wealth. I don't believe that at all. I'm not that this is I'm not throwing any shade. This is this is not passive aggressive at all. Um, I don't believe that. But, you know, more broadly, perhaps outside of the, the the ecosystem that we're in, flaunting wealth is a big thing on YouTube, whether it's someone's, you know, their house, their car, their shoes. Uh, here's my shopping haul. Here's my forty five dollar like eyeliner or something like that. It's a big thing here on YouTube and the video game community uh, perhaps because I'm so entrenched, you know, I, it's here, but I, I don't, it, it's never struck me as someone flaunting their wealth. And I think most people who watch these videos don't interpret it that way. I know I don't, I watch a lot of these videos. And so I've never interpreted it that way. That's not true. There have been, there have been a couple of YouTubers 
Uh, and I'm not naming names, not only because I think it's mean, but because I can't remember them. And I think the people that do flaunt their video game collections in that way don't last here because people immediately recognize what that is and they don't give those people attention. I don't think wealth flaunters succeed in the video game collecting YouTube scene. I don't think that they do. Um, but for the most part, most people you know that do these videos, I don't think they're flaunting, and I think most of the audience doesn't think of it that way, but that doesn't mean that there isn't kind of like a certain strangeness to it, right? So initially I was very reluctant to do collection videos because of that reason. And I've, I, I have, even though I have made dozens of them, uh, I never felt fully comfortable with them be, because of that reason. Um, but you may have noticed that in recent times, I kind of stopped doing them. My last two videos before this one were collection videos. Um, but as I sort of like ebbed and flowed through YouTube, you know, I came and I went and I came and I went, I, I started making other kinds of videos. I started making like news videos or uh, I did some art videos. I started like weaning myself off of collecting, uh, collecting videos because in one of my absences here on YouTube, uh, I kind of had an epiphany and that was these were perhaps, these collecting videos, making them and watching them were perhaps impacting me negatively in a way that I did not understand. If someone in my 20s, I'm 36 now, so you know, years ago when I was making YouTube videos when I was in my mid 20s, if someone came to me and said, I think your collecting is unhealthy, I would have been like, what are you talking about? Like, it's it doesn't impact my job. It doesn't impact my relationships, you know, my romantic or friendship or, or family relationships at all. I'm not spending myself into the poorhouse. How is this negative at all? I wouldn't, I just would not have accepted the idea that these were, these videos, making them and watching them, were impacting me negatively. And that's because how they were impacting me were, were much more uh, subconscious than that, I think. This is the core conceit of this video. So me personally... Uh, I, I have, I am diagnosed with several mental health afflictions. Uh, I have major depressive disorder, which is basically like depression as like a chronic illness. Like that is, frankly, I think it's something I'm always going to have. I, I, I occasionally kind of get re-upped on that diagnosis. Like, yep, you're depressed. And so I don't think it's going away. I think that's just, that's just who I am. And so uh, treating my depression is more like managing it and sort of like living with it rather than trying to like cure it because that's the curing is just not going to happen. I have generalized anxiety disorder with panic attacks and I am, I also have bipolar disorder. So, and I have no shame in like admitting any of those things. I'm just trying to gather my thoughts and try to... <laughs> <laughs> bring that to the next point in my 20s my 20s was a was was a time of I kept myself so busy that I completely forgot I had these things I frankly if you would ask me I would have thought that I was like cured or whatever in my in my 20s uh so I I worked at a job that was very demanding my my minimum week was like 50 hours it was I, I would say the average was before I got laid off was like 60 um I frequently worked two days Two, I'm sorry, two days, two weeks straight without a day off. And twice during the eight years that I worked at this job, uh, I worked about a month straight. And these were not eight hour days. These were 12 to 13 hour days. Um, it was pretty ridiculous. And on top of that, uh, you know, I had, I was in a, I had a live-in partner, a relationship. Uh, I saw my family once a week. I went drinking with my friends once a week. I went to a lot of shows. I went to a lot of shows all over New England and, and New York. Um, I went to Tokyo quite a bit. And then of course there was TV and Lost. I did the videos, I did the podcast, I did the website, and I did some freelance writing uh, on top of that. As if all of that wasn't enough, that's what I did. And I was able to do that by like not sleeping. And if you go back to my older videos, like you can see it. Like I, you know, I've always been sort of like a bigger guy. Like that's just my body. I'm just like this barrel shaped dude with a beard. Like that's just who I am. Um, but I was, I was big. Um, and I have these dark circles under my eyes, like these, just like these, these raccoon eyes. Like if you go back to those older videos, you can definitely see it. That's because I didn't sleep. I just worked myself on physically unhealthy, mentally unhealthy, of course, too. And a, a big part of, of, of managing 
uh, my mental health, managing it poorly, of course, basically propping it up with like a stick, just kind of like, yep, hope this holds, uh, was collecting and YouTube. So, you know, basically I'd watch a YouTube video from, well, it doesn't matter who it's from. I'm not going to name names because again, this is not about what other people do. I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. That's, it's, I don't think anyone's done any wrong here to be clear. Got to be clear about that. But I watch collection videos from other people. I would learn about a new game that I never heard of and I'm, there'd be like a burst of dopamine. And then I would go researching that game. I would look up videos here on YouTube. I'd look up, um, what was that website? Hardcore Gaming 101 or something like that. And, you know, as I'm researching it, poof, another burst of dopamine. And then I would go shopping for the game. And then I'd get the game in. I'd play it. I would talk about it on Twitter, on YouTube, on the podcast. Um, and then I would, you know, put it on my shelf. It would find a permanent place in my game room. And every step of the way, I'm just getting this burst of, do this tiny burst of dopamine, just enough to keep me going. And that's why during my peaked YouTube years, you would watch one of these monthly collection updates and there'd be like 30 or more games in them because I had to keep buying these games. I had to keep doing this to sustain my mental health. And again, I have to say this for, 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 I don't know, the fourth time or whatever in this video, I don't think anyone else is his fault in this. I'm not blaming anyone for making these kinds of videos. Uh, honestly, I'm not even blaming myself. It's just uh, just human nature, I guess, at work. But when I, when I discovered this about myself, I sort of like collected my thoughts, sort of figured out what was happening. And then I wrote a series of three articles on the old TV Unless website, which doesn't exist anymore. And when that happened, I had a number of uh people privately through like twitter dm like tell me like yes i can i can relate to this like maybe not 100 percent uh there's a lot of sirens outside sorry <laughs> i can relate to this maybe not 100 percent, but uh, a big part of this i can relate to and um it hit me that i wasn't alone like i never assumed that i was alone in this regard um, but, um, it, 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 it was sort of sobering to realize that other people have been impacted this way. And then I had to, um, God, the siren just killed me. I was hoping to do this in one take. I don't want to do multiple takes. The, the least amount of editing, the better, right? Like, I don't have time to do a bunch of cuts. Look in the scrub through the video and find where I was. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous, but I'm just so, I'm, I, like I said, I'm 36. I'm so lazy. I don't want to do it. Um, oh my God. <laughs> um, wild. Okay. Finally, I finally had to do a cut because not only were there a million sirens outside, the teenage girls that live next door decided it was a great time to blast last Christmas on their porch, I guess. I don't know. Um, so where was I? Okay, so it was sobering to read these messages from other people. And I had to take some time out to think about what I was putting into the video game community. When I talk about the video game community, you know, I'm not just talking about how we comment on each other's videos or how we used to do video responses or whatever. It's, it's to me, like also a sense of like, responsibility, particularly to those of you who are watching this video. Uh, you know, I have 20,000 subscribers, but my views don't even break a thousand these days. And it suggests to me that those of you who are still watching my videos, many of you have been here, have been a subscriber for years, and I thank you for that, are, are loyal viewers of mine. I really appreciate that. And I just, I don't want to put out bad vibes to my loyal viewers. I had to sort of like look in, look introspectively and think about am I hurting people in the same way that I was hurt um I still don't actually have an answer for that that's kind of why I did two collection videos kind of back to back I kind of wanted to gauge what other people's uh reactions were to those what my own reaction was as a creator of those videos but I just know that collection videos were you know, it became unhealthy for me. This may not speak to you, to be clear. Like, you may not be someone who is impacted by this. You know, obviously, I was impacted because I already had a pre-existing, uh, I had pre-existing mental health afflictions. And you may not, and this may not affect you at all. And that's great. That's awesome. But it did impact me. It did impact other people. And... For me, it came crumbling down. When I took, I took my first break from YouTube when my long-term partner and I 
broke up. It was like an eight year relationship and then we broke up and I didn't want to be like all like weepy on video. So I took some time away from YouTube and that totally hurt my channel uh, really bad. I never really recovered, never really kept that momentum up. And when that came crumbling down, it, it was like, well, you know, we all build identities around our, our hobbies and our interests. Like these become part of our identities, whether you're a gamer, whether you like sports, whether you're a musician, all of this stuff becomes part of your identity. And when that is sort of kicked out from underneath you, uh, it hurts. It, it hurts. And you. I, I felt directionless. I didn't know where to go. And it became clear how much those collection videos, making them and watching them, uh, had affected me now that they were sort of gone. And that's why I sort of shied away from not really making them the last couple of years. Uh, but I also wanted to see what it was like for myself to make them, like how I felt about making them and, and how the community reacted to my making them. That's why my last two videos were essentially collection videos. And I'm kind of curious about your thoughts about this. Uh, again, if it doesn't, if this doesn't impact you, uh, that's great. I mean, that, that is great. And perhaps it is inconceivable to you how it could impact someone, but I am sitting here telling you that it did impact me and I know it impacted other people. And I'm kind of curious what what anyone's thoughts are, whether it impacted you or not, on collection videos. Uh, what do you think the impact of flaunting possessions, and the flaunting is not even the right word because that's not what I'm doing and I don't think that's what other people are doing, but showing possessions. It's a lot less of a subject now. I do remember when I used to do it years ago, occasionally we get comments about like, how do you afford this? You know, where do you get the money for this? Like the, the, the question of money does had entered the conversation um and i assume those were mostly like kids anyway because my my audience did skew a little bit younger previously um but the question of money does enter the conversation and i'm kind of curious how people feel about these collection videos how you know you know take a moment to think about them not just like oh i like learning about new games but like what is there a broader impact to these things uh, I'm curious about that because I like making them. I think I might want to make more. Uh, maybe not, definitely not as much as I used to, that's for sure, but maybe a few. And I'm kind of curious where other people are on this, on this subject. So that's my story. That's why you don't really see a lot of collection videos from me. This video, I don't even know how long this video is going to be because of that cut. I tried not to do the cut, but here we are. Um, but it was probably a long video. Uh, I want to thank you for sticking through it. It, 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 to me, it's sort of a, it's a bit of a heavier topic. Um, but I, I'm kind of curious how these things impact our little community here on YouTube. So, uh, I want to thank you for watching. I look forward to your feedback and until next time, you guys take it easy.